motion to adopt the agenda? Um, go ahead. No. I said. Ah, that's a good move. <laughs> First thing on the discussion. Oh, those in favor? I'm sorry. Aye. Uh, first thing on the discussion is the Sunshine Center use. So, I guess uh, Roberta, what have we got going so far on that that you've come up with? Well. Before we got too far into renting or not renting or whatever we're going to do, um, I did talk to, I tried to get a hold of our buildings and the local to see if we could do a quick inspection to just tell us the status of the facility. If we can, because it's been five years since we've done anything, they, I didn't ever contact, get in, I mean, they never connected. Uh, the building, the five, state fire marshal will be here tomorrow at 10 to go through the building. So that will give us a um, starting point. And then also talking this morning with Daryl Anderson and with Jeff, we decided that maybe having an asbestos per person come in and look to see where we are. There's one out of Clam of Daryl's going to give me the name just to see what we can and can't do before we do anything so it doesn't bite us. So As the county got bit, yeah. did you guys have read the newspaper with some stuff with that, so it seems to be back on the state's radar. So we just need to be really careful before you do anything one way or the other, because that can really limit you. Because that and asbestos stuff is really expensive. Very few contractors are certified in it. Remediation is very limited, and the rates are very high. So it's important to know what's there, where it isn't there, so you guys can make a decision what you want to do. Without being defined by OSHA, that type of inspection. Yeah, there's one in the <coughs> and one in the climate. Decision. There's not a specific. Um, so I we'll have to put it out for public bid or notice or anything like that. We can literally have anyone come in. One yeah, it's a facility we own. Release. It's a facility we own. So it's what you're allowed to do with it, dependent on what can be done with it, what are possibilities. And I mean, you you want to put out public caring for some different potential uses. That's an option. There, there's there's quite a bit of. Like you said, this is literally owned by the town of Lakeview, so it's not a. It's not something where we're, you know, but if we have work done on, on or anything like that, that, so not, not, not the inspections, but if we actually say to remediate something or whatever, that type of stuff over a certain amount does have to put up a bid. So there should be on file somewhere our last agreement that we made with the YMCA. Yes. That said, hey, here's the parameters of release, here's mm -hmm. what liability we are assuming mm -hmm. here's the liability you're assuming and you don't any assume. inspections that we previously we don't done assume any no you if you're, you're going to be to well that's exactly inspections. why i'm wondering why are we even doing an inspection for the health of it if we're not assuming any liability we enter into a lease you can't, liability. You, you can't liability is one thing whether it can be used for any purpose at all that's building permitting or anything else like that right. you need to know what uses yeah. you can make of it at all i mean there might be something there, and I don't think so, and neither does Daryl, that the whole thing has to be knocked down. That's not, we don't, we don't have any indication of that. I'm just saying 
potentially, and especially with the, the asbestos stuff has gotten stricter and stricter, as has some of the paint issues and stuff like that. I mean, the legislature has been very active in those because of some very prominent incidents with some of the child care stuff and some of the other proof of public building issues. So it's something that you want to be using older buildings, you kind of have to be careful with. And every time you stop operating something somewhere, some, some stuff gets grandfathered in while they're in operation because they can't just change the standards unilaterally. Right. If once you stop operating though, you have to usually bring it back up to whatever the current standards are. So whether that's ADA or, I mean, it just, you don't want to get into a situation, for example, where you have to put in an elevator or something like that because that could end up costing so much is, is worth more than what the building is worth. And, I, and again, don't take that as that's going to be required and things like that. I'm just giving you worst case scenarios that could happen. But the asbestos is something, you need to know what asbestos is there regardless. That's that's just a base sure. with older buildings. That's it's not something you can mess it. You be, if you got one person doing maintenance or something, they get exposed, and you should have known about it. So we're there. assuming that there was not a previous test done. I mean, that the we YMCA never, did not have it done for that. I mean, their lease was not very long. No, but we did do quite a bit of things. As Sandy had mentioned, quite a bit of improvements on the building yeah. to facilitate yeah. the, the ramp and everything for it. Correct, the ramp, the um, railings, the... Right. I just don't want to have to redo something that that actually sure. could have been done before. I mean, all this right. cost well, all, time and money. And right. All you're talking about doing right now, as long as you're willing to go forward with it, is just figure out what the condition of the building is and if anything does need to be With the building official with someone who's licensed to check. Figure that out, exactly. You're just checking to see what's in the system. basics, you know, what you've got, and then you make the determination. And you need to do stuff like that as well if the town wants to pursue some kind of grant funding or something to bring it up to code. All that stuff has to be done anyway. So it's you really need a baseline, basically, and if you want to put it in medical terms, you want a baseline of where you're at with the building. Would it make a difference um, what goes in there? As far, I mean, you know, regulations for young children as opposed to using it for an office of, for someone office space for someone or is it the same? Some would. There's some specialized things for certain entities, but there's also some things just for public buildings in general, like ADA access. Right. Um, asbestos, doesn't matter what you have in there, if there's any potential for person exposure. Lead paint may have some different regulations versus children's center versus something else. But then, like I said, if the building gets assessed at a certain level and might be appropriate for some uses and some not. And again, then you would kind of have an idea, okay, it's going to cost this X, I mean, for example, lead paint issue. It could cost so much to get the building where it needed to go for some reason that it's not even worth pursuing for the one, the right beginnings folks that are interested in looking at this versus something else. And that's kind of a, like you said, you want to be careful going too far down a particular path until you're kind of sure where your foundational level is because it can get, so it's expensive to start getting some of the other assessments and stuff done after this point. This is the baseline stuff, and you want to know kind of what people are getting into. So timeline-wise, building official, again, if we get done before five, we'll go catch him. And because um, I did see him today. Yeah, fire marshal about this because I was busy with stuff. But that, yeah, as you have, have the fire marshal go by, and then somebody that does asbestos, I mean, really, that sh hopefully could be accomplished within the next week. Yeah, week or two max. Yeah, okay. two, two max. But then, in the meantime, whatever our decision would be moving forward, if those things come back clean, mm -hmm. we've got an asset we need to lease it out yeah. right, to someone, something to do something with. I mean, it's um, sitting there vacant. Yeah, it's sitting there vacant. And time wise, um, could it be helpful to see the previous? lease agreement with um, YMCA and kind of say, hey, look, this was an example to those who are interested right. in what that lease, because you're obviously going to uh, need to look at it, make sure whatever lease is drawn up. Now, they can come up with their own, but if we gave them an example to look over. And the landlord usually draws, we would be drawing yeah. up the lease. That's, that's my job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, exactly. you know. We have that. So. So, right. But we should have some base to go off of. And yeah. then if we were to provide that to those who might be using it, but or want to use it and they it's can feel opinion. comfortable with it and mm -hmm. then again I mean within a couple of weeks I think we should be able to make a decision and just I think you know you guys are interested we've heard from other people who are interested mm -hmm. I think it's appropriate that we at least you know say hey look 
we're going to put it out there, but we want to know what people well, are willing to offer. Well, for I think who, who wants it besides these guys who are interested? I've mentioned it several times, and it's always fallen on deaf ears. We decided well, the last time, and that's the Episcopal Church next door, the next door neighbor. And the Bishop of the Episcopal Eastern Diocese has requested to find out what it would take to either police, as we were doing with the Y after they closed down. Both of the bishops have looked at it, so. And I think we've got well, the, at least the one lease, the lease, I mean, we need to decide if the lease is going to be the same before we show them the old lease because it may yeah, be Yeah, that would be different. something that Jeff needs to look at first yeah. and make sure that there's nothing in there. And, and we need to decide, you know, how much we are going to charge and what everyone is responsible for doing before. Well, that's why even the council might from want party to party. <laughs> and that's why we yeah, might want to look at the yeah. previous lease because if not, I mean, I have nothing to base an idea about a lease or, or the price. Well, and the other thing that I'm going to recommend Roberta does is talk to CIS and see what, because again, insurance requirements change. A lot of the basic stuff is not going to change with that kind of lease. I mean, responsibility for utilities, maintenance, all of that kind of stuff is fairly standard. What will change a lot of times are um, liability limits on insurance that usually goes up. You know, it just it depends on what is necessary and what CIS feels like we need to be protected at. So that's what I'm going to have Roberta check on because that's uh, that's a lot of that is insurance information that we need to know so that they're comfortable with our current insurance rates. So. Well, and and in regards to the Episcopal usage of it was looked at for a teaching facility for the Episcopal Church, and so they they have the cove in Eastern Ohio, or that's where the the uh, retreat is now and they were looking at one here in southern Oregon and of course there's a, a school in Portland that's an Episcopal school so that was the request of two bishops that have been over here and I had let them know that it's vacant right now mm -hmm. and they were very interested but I mentioned it several times and you know we're, we but they need to come and well that we, yeah, yeah yeah you bet if that's what we're going to do because like I said the last time that we were going to do anything was sell and that was for, I think, 37000 to the county. Yeah, that was... Well, mental health. That's the county. That's who the money was going through at that time. That was... Oh, so that's the last thing we did on the building. And that's the last usage that we looked at. Mm -hmm. And that fell... And did we, did we get another letter They were also planning on spending excessive amounts of money... Oh, to, to get it up to their, yeah, to their needs. To what they wanted. Oh, yeah. So we'll, let, we'll just uh, table this until uh, we find out as far as yeah. all the inspections and stuff like that. So, well, that, okay. that could be, and uh, we would maybe know something by our regular yeah, meeting next yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. And that is the following one. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So. Okay. Sorry we couldn't come up with something quicker, but all of a sudden it's like it's got to be done first. Oh, yeah. Okay. Follow process. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Next on the list is swimming pass. Uh, Roberta got hit up on this from the Lions Club because they put a lot of money into that swimming pool. And they were wanting to from passes for their auction. And we need to decide, because at one point we decided we wasn't going to do give out passes. So, but where they've, the Lions have put a lot of money into that pool, I think we should be obligated to do something. Well. And especially if we ask them to help us out again with something. But that that gets into the issue then of the next party wanting the same thing, you know. There were a lot of other entities that helped us on our drive to yeah. do the pool, and so you know they they're going to come at us then and say, well, we helped you in the drive to raise a hundred plus thousand dollars. How much passes? Depending on what I mean, we haven't set the prices. A few hundred, and it has a couple yeah. hundred. So. Pretty considerable amount, and when you get hit by as many entities as we have been in the previous years, it adds up, and you're pulling. Well, I know, yeah, 
proceeds are not near and as I'm high. And I'm not sure where they earmark their money yet. So, and, and that's for their lines like auction, oh, so silent them. auction, right. which is what we did with the mentor group this mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. I know that there were passes at that, and there have been passes to other things, but I'm not sure how much this year. I haven't told them all, but. No, we turned them down with numerous yeah. types this year. I there hasn't been any. Yeah, they got some. Is it before we made that decision? I don't I think. know when. Yeah. I mean, it must have been before we It's been a good while that we've been turning down yeah. several requests now. But I think one thought is to establish who has really helped us a lot or, or which group has helped a lot. You know, I mean, I don't know. And well, maybe, yeah, put a, you know, a limit on it. Yeah. I mean, I, fact is we're continuing to lose money on the pool so yeah. uh, you know I, but these other programs are, are absolutely right they help spearhead a lot of the volunteerism that went on to help save the pool and get the funding necessary because the town certainly didn't have it and didn't, you know, and they invested in it yeah so yeah. they they put their time into it and it's again for an auction um you know to help continue but like you said i mean we need to have a good list of who is asking for what, uh, and not just swim passes, but for other usages that you know we may not be charging for or donating to other groups for. I mean, the county comes and asks us for money at times, and you know, it should be nice to see where these exchanges are happening and, where those and why, and yeah, and what budgets are ultimately you know um, losing money. Right. So. Well, I don't know that. Well, we have like three options really: give them a pass. Give the pass, mm -hmm. charge them for the pass, or give them a cut rate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I mean. <laughs> well, and, you know, it's one thing. I and I, I would, uh, oh, excuse me, no, just no. to finish my thought, which came in my head after I quit talking. But, um, you know, the service clubs do do a lot for the community, mm -hmm. so I kind of feel good about them getting at least a little benefit. And you're not legally obligated. Give, when giving to one group versus another, because it's a, it's a donation, so it's, it doesn't establish any kind of precedent where somebody else can say, well, you have to do this. So that isn't a, yeah, so there's no legal ramification. No, there, there isn't any legal ramifications, they're just yeah. uh, community ramifications. <laughs> well, and I think that's <laughs> where I was headed is, it's one thing to give to the Lions for other reasons for optimists for their auctions or benefits, that's a whole Ontario thing for other people that are just trying to raise money that really aren't affiliated with an organization. I mean, you know, per se. Or as an example, the West Side School, what do we benefit? And I'm sure we do, but I'm, I'm not, that's just an example that, you know, they have gotten one for years until this year. And so, you know, that would be outside the... Well, like you say, there's only three service organizations in our community. Yeah. And I was so just the only that. one of the three that you mentioned. So. But, you know, if, if we did open it to just those, but at the same time, there's going to be others that say, I think uh, we donated to the pool mm -hmm. and the big club raises. Well, we'll just have to have them ask next year if well, we authorize it maybe this time and then... Well, then maybe we'll have monies available. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the thing about it. You get a list. Money's always horizon, but... They're not even so and remember, the swim passes actually aren't costing anything because that assumes you're going to sell it. So that's that assumes that you would have necessarily sold that one. They're not, so it's technically not something that well, is completely out of a budget thing as far as that's as. true. I mean, we'd just be two hundred dollars richer if we <laughs> didn't give it away. But that, you know, I don't feel bad about giving one to service organizations. That see, and I'm not sure, like when Daryl said, or. Manager, right? Right. Said, so, you know, he felt that it was just, uh, it doesn't cost you money, but on the other hand, if you give out so many that you're not making any money, then it does cost us. You know, that's Just the way I, I look at it a little bit different than he did. Um, but I think a service organization, no? Like that. I, I understand where they're coming from. We didn't discuss that. Well, they may have been buying the pool for a while. So I think that's probably a good idea. So. The other thing is just to um, make a decision well, they've as got the they ask, yeah, they've one got, at a time. They've got the you option this Saturday, right? right. And that's a, I mean, I'm sure that's they need it now, and that's yeah. a, they're on hold for another year then. If we don't so if we did the service organizations, mm -hmm. well, that's... I think 
think that would be good to reduce the service load. Well, I think if we do it, you know, and if we want to request funds from them with one of their future options, then yeah. You know, it's would be easy to do. Right. Right. That's where I was coming from on this. We hope they would continue to support. Them. Yeah, because it's the same with Rotary. If we put in some money for the heat exchanger or whatever, you know, and, you know, whatever. And, well, yeah. I mean, it does help a little bit if you do work together. You bet. So, so is that um, kind of a consensus? consensus well, I, my consensus or my opinion would be that we should give it give them one this year and then just go uh, request by request in the future and mm -hmm. unless it gets out of hand then <laughs> well, it was totally out before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I, I think a lot of families got free prices yeah. too. <coughs> reduce prices. Okay. So we'll do that. That's okay everybody. So mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, next on the item is the lodging tax. Um, Roberta's got ads in the paper looking for interest people that want to be on that committee. Advisory yes. committee. But it's in the paper now. Well, I've seen it in Wi-Fi this morning. Oh, okay, right. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. 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 Well, I, I was looking at some notes I took, you know, what they were, I think this was for the advisory council. One person from, that's a lodging representative, and one non-lodging, one chamber member, question mark, one town council, and one at large. I think they were suggesting a five. So that's, that's just what I had on the notes. When the uh, travel Oregon people were here, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a fairly good mix. I think we do need someone from the lodging community oh, yeah. to mm -hmm. do it, to be yeah. on it too. So. And I, hospitality, there are a number of restaurants in town that serve those who visit our community on a regular basis, and they're the first hand people to talk. So, I you know there, like you said, that could be a non. The one thing I will caution you guys on signing a town council member on it mm -hmm. could make it difficult. Yeah, I don't, think, that, I don't think that's a very good idea. No, that was that, just their recommendation. Right. Yeah. I don't think they're thinking it through because the problem they run into is you guys need to be able to vote. Okay. Remember, that's an advisory council. Okay. They're not Whoever making a decision. Has to be abstained. Exactly. And so that doesn't make any sense as far as yeah. you guys, like you said, especially if there's a deadlock, you could end up with a 2 2 tie and then you can't do anything with the funds. So you need that full majority. Potentially to so it's it's up to you if you want to do it. Yeah. Just understand that whoever was put on from the council would could end up in situations where they would not be able to vote on the ultimate result because they were already involved in the process. Well, and maybe what, took what we have on some other committees and things is a liaison person, and the liaison person doesn't have a vote. They just right. can attend meetings. But, right. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that yeah. as far as okay. that that's a workable in between position right. and the same with the chamber i mean i know that um yeah. last week sharon mentioned that she didn't think there should be a chamber for a person and i don't know it's just one thing she brought up so i don't know well uh, it goes the same way we've got it really and mm -hmm. sharon says she's not able to vote mm -hmm. in their meetings mm -hmm. and so without a vote over there on their expenditures why should they their board members be able to come over here and spend our money. Mm -hmm. So, another thing is the funding, and that concerns me in a big way because the way that I see lodgers tax advisory boards being utilized here in the state, since I've looked into it some more and, and other endeavors that I've been involved in, is the proceeds are usually for event advertising and those groups that have an event coming up that will draw tourism to our community are requesting the funds but in regards to the needs of lakeview and i i visited with roberta about this but we've never really openly discussed it as a council and i i, I don't know the figure that's going to come in but i, I recall a figure over a hundred thousand so let's just say a hundred thousand because that's an easy figure to work with and whether it's shy or, or above that might be different but if 
Oh, it's not my truck. <laughs> it wouldn't shut up that fast. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the thing that, that I see we should do is hold half of that money because 30% of that is something that the town has the option to do with whatever they want to. So you wouldn't want to release that 30%. But at least another 20% needs to be held by the town when Roberta is given the approval by the town council to do something as far as like website. That's going to fit into it. That can be used as tourism dollars. And so different things that, that are utilized for our monies don't, I think, need to go before the, the Lodgers Tax Advisory Board. I think that they should be, before them, given a, a, a figure, which is, like I say, kind of up in the air, but we're looking at perhaps 50000 or whatever figure we come up with. I'm just throwing out figures for us to weigh out. Uh, that you guys will have the authority to screen requests and then come to the council for to give your recommendations and the council vote on the ultimate decision to, to support those different organizations and their requests. And I, I don't think we need to turn all of our money over to the Lodgers Tax Advisory Board. I don't think that there are any, or there are probably are very few that will get requests to be on the board that have worked with that kind of funding before and, and would know exactly what to do with it and, and the best options. So the council should have some discretionary funds and Roberta should have some discretionary funds as our manager who runs the show. And that's my feelings. And I just thought that that needed to come out because if we're planning on turning it all over to the Lodgers Tax Advisory Board, we're going to have to set up some pretty good stipulations on what that's supposed to be used for and, and everything down the line. So. Well, so the law puts some very strict stipulations yeah. on what you're doing too. It's got to be oh, tourism yeah. related and it's very specific about what it can be for facilities or not. And it's <coughs> so that needs to be those so by the council decisions. So that's why it's, it'd be really nice to see what like a, a different lodger tax uh, committee from another community has done with the money. Just for example's sake. So because I, I agree, if it's possible under the law to save some of this money, if not all of it. I mean, if we've got legitimate projects that fall under the law, there's no reason why we need to send that money anywhere if we could spend it within the town for true tourism reasons. So, I mean, that, the committee is important. I think long-term going, that'll absolutely be necessary. But if there's short-term fixes that we need, like the website is yeah. a disgrace to websites. Yeah. Um, and you know, hasn't probably been touched in many, many years on an appropriate level. So I mean, there's some certain things by law if we can do them. I think we need to do them, and that's why I, I wonder. Obviously, we don't want to be a voting member on that group, possibly for reasons why you'd have to, you know, then get into we, a deadlock on our issues that you've already addressed. Yeah, we, we right. talked that. Yeah, and I was yeah, here. For, I was here for that part. Of oh. it. And, but what I'm, but what I do feel is that we like a liaison, we ought to have somebody there at least listening to what their ideas are uh, because they may be in left field on something where we really, we, they'll come back to us and they've done all this work and we really weren't feeling that that was appropriate. That's why I think we have to give them some direction on where we'd like to see the money spent as well because if it's ultimately coming back to us for a vote and we're not on the same page or at least near the same page, we're going to be. Well, one option you might have is you guys establish when you establish the committee some priority areas, you know, yeah. these. this is the pot of money and you want it allocated in percentage-wise in these three particular areas, you know, 20% or 20, you know, what, 33 and 30%, 33 and 30%, 33 and 30% 30 30 or something like that. And these are the different areas you have to play in for taking requests. And then you can relax those if you don't get enough requests in a particular area to fully exhaust the funds. So that's kind of, that's another option you can do, giving some guidelines. I actually asked Roberta to grab the lodging tax mm -hmm. ordinance really quick. I wanted to make sure we didn't have how much the TLP had. Did you did you have um, this in NISA? When you were there? They didn't have them, okay. <laughs> but I had one. That solves that problem. That is uh, <laughs> was kind of like really shady when you yeah. yeah. wouldn't have garnered too many dollars. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Thousand of a hundred, if that's what we get, we really don't want to just put this in the general and watch it all dissipate yeah. everywhere. I mean, we Our ought to think about, be a number one. you know, <laughs> I mean, so bad. You know, I'd hate to just say, hey, throw it to the pool because we're losing 40,000 a year or whatever the number is. Well, yeah. no, I'll just I'll, a little bit, you know, but ultimately, we're taking something to subsidize for that pool, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, and so. Whether that's sewer fund, water fund, whatever it is, we're backfilling. That, that's not going to be the asset. same every year. I mean, that's something we can Hopefully decide not. on. It's a technical problem each, each year <laughs> in the budget. We will fix the problem. Yeah. Fix the problem. Yeah. 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 Adequate yeah. tourism yeah. promotion, yeah. tourism yeah. Yeah. facilities for certain debt services. Okay. For the dollar? Yeah. I was just going to. Concession. Sorry. No, you're good. I'm okay. Thing. Go ahead. I, I just, I had a form that is given out by a committee that I used to serve on in, in uh, New Mexico. And they have a note on here from the mayor to those who are applying for special event advertising funds from the community. And one thing that they do mention, if your event is not geared toward an overnight stay, or does not expect a minimum of 250 attendees, and that's a larger community. Yeah. They, I mean, they, they draw more the West <laughs> Texas. Well, so, to, yeah, now that's about, about 20 yeah. people. But there are stipulations <laughs> that you try to garner, like I said, the reciprocal of, of having people in your life, You're, because if they're staying here again, we get that money again. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a reciprocal type deal, and, and the wheel keeps turning, and we'll be able to promote Lakeview to the utmost that way. So I think there are stipulations that we need to put to the special advertising request that we get. But, I mean, that's a lot of money that, that we're going to be distributing. Yeah. And it is a lot. Yeah. Well, 30% may be used for city services, and then the 17% for tourism promotion and tourism-related facilities or certain debt-related expenses. Which is yes. funding debt-related to, if you go into like some kind of bond or something like that, for like a new tourism related facility. That's what it's for, it's for debt service. So that you can get some more bang for your buck. That's the 30%. No, that's no, the 70%. 70. 70%. So you can obligate yourself, like under a water surcharge or water rates, it's very similar. Let's say you were building, you know, a humongous outdoor amphitheater. We were gonna to try to be the Brit Festival of Southeastern Oregon or something like that. You could, that you that could borrow it and then have that tax revenue dedicated to paying that debt service for a period of time. So you can choose to do a lot larger project if you wanted to, as long as it's clearly tourism related, you know, tourism facility. But again, it's gotta be, there, and then there's some state requirements on that as well, but there is some ability to use, you know, but that again would obligate those funds for several years, you know, basically functionally a public mortgage payment, just like you do with other bonds or other situations. And that's what would be really nice to see an example of what other communities are doing. With those like, dollars. Yeah. I keep thinking, which is, you know, certainly a long shot and probably a pipe dream, but it'll cover on the pool, which is something, that, you know, you talk to anybody who wants to use the pool, they wish they could use it year round and have a cover over it. And obviously that's a huge expense, we're already losing money, but how could we justify that as being towards tourism? I think you should be able to say that. Where most of our lodging places don't have tourism, or a, a pool, you could say, well, you know, you want to come use the town pool, we'll give you a discount, say you stayed overnight at this place or whatever. You know, something like that that helps with tourism to bring people in. And 
you know. And I guess the nice thing about doing something like that too is you've got a long term. You have a long term. You know, you don't have to make a decision for several years while you've obligated those funds. If you decide to do a bigger project like that, maybe you've all done that. No, the tax revenue goes directly to servicing that debt. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, but you can't you have set to it aside to that accrual. Yeah. Yeah. No, the you uh, what you do is you get the you get the debt obligation going, you know, to like a USDA or a loan or something along those lines, and then you're servicing it with dedicated funds from that. The only issue is remember this isn't like um, property taxes or water service. <sighs> These can vary, so you want to be careful doing right. stuff like right. that because. You know, some years the motels are completely full. Others, I mean, you could have 100,000 one year and 65,000 the next, and you're still stuck with those debt obligations. So that's what makes that dangerous as far as longer term projects that direction. So that's the thing you want to consider. You can do it, but you don't have any, it's like I said, it's not, it's a sales tax functionally, and, it, and it, mm -hmm. it's dependent on. How many sales are made? So, but there's history. What the ta the county could be able to show us saying, hey, over the last 10, 20 years, we've all collected this, yeah. and it, right. yes, it's fluctuating, but it's within this correct kind of you ballpark. Get, you, and you would want to probably make a decision on what the average scale. would be mm -hmm. within that. But exactly. You wouldn't want to dedicate the whole seventy no, no, percent to that. No. So, no. you know, you'd have to just decide on. No. I, I'm not sure we should do it for a year or two because that way. We would have a little bit more um, knowledge. Plus, about how much the new tax, the, there's new collection stuff you're going to have to do. So, understand your revenue the first couple of years are probably going to be lower just until it gets used to getting everything in effect. Because the town's never collected one before, so it's a kind of a new, it shouldn't be that hard, but yeah. there'll be administration cost. Mm -hmm. Which is partially with the 30%, is partially supposed to cover. I mean, you need to understand you're getting. So like that's, that, that's why that 7:30 split was there is to enable and enable administrative staffing time for that. So can we take administrative costs out of the 70 percent? No, we have it at 30. Well, what I was going to say, yeah, you brought like unless you were administrative expenses for okay, you open that outdoor amphitheater mm -hmm. and you run staff for that. That is something that kind of ongoing stuff would be allowed under that for that specific tourism related item. But not for administration of the tax or anything else like that. Right. It's gotta be directly, you know, tourism related. It has to go back to that, yeah. Or promoting tourism, yeah. Okay. So there's again there's some pretty um, there are some pretty strict restrictions on it and cities have gotten sued over that a couple of different mm -hmm. times over the sense that law's not in effect. One of the things, Jeff, that I've, I've noticed in some of the communities here in Oregon and other states as well, those funds are used, as you said, for facilities that are catering to tourists. Mm -hmm. And we're lacking conference rooms and facilities of the like for people who would come to our community. And that can make a big difference on especially off season or shoulder seasons when you don't have the rodeo going on or whatever you can actually have small conferences in your community and we have a lot of federal agencies that might make use of they, they're able to use their facilities in, in that regard yeah that, 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 oh, that aspect the government type contracting wouldn't be this is right. it's not really tourism they're wanting new no, the facility it is. correct but you it can't, can't but the, but again the, the really sell facilities in the state doesn't come down on you it really needs to be okay to bring in a conference to the area, something that wouldn't have been here before. You know, it really needs to be tourist, tourist related. I mean, you're not going into business to be the uh, Las Mobile. Vegas Convention Center or something like that. I mean, it's it, it gets a little dicey with stuff like that when you get in those gray areas. So you just have to be very careful with what you're doing and look at some of those communities that have gotten by with usage, usage of those funds here. Correct. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get a survey. And especially on the east side of the mountains, yeah. smaller areas, to just to kind of see. Because again, I mean, obviously the tourism funding that Eugene and Portland gets <laughs> within all of their motels, bed and breakfast and everything else, versus you know, somewhere like Burns or John Day, or somewhere else that has one that actually still has lodging and stuff like that. You know, because again, it's it's kind of scale. I mean, you're not keeping the um, theater open, for example, in downtown Portland or something along those lines. So. And I would make mention that the lodger's tax is being collected because I booked uh, five rooms, well, nine rooms for the last two concerts for the, the uh, 
Lake Arts Council and the lodging fee went up <laughs> with our lodging tax on from one month to the next. So I mean it's it's certainly being collected and, and we'll see the results of, of that on down the line. The other thing the council is going to have to kind of determine is how smartly you want to get on enforcement for if the town really gets heavy into Airbnb or anything along those lines. Because as I kind of told you guys, it's a nightmare trying to get everything like that tracked. I and mean, you almost need an employee checking every couple of weeks on some of the big travel websites to see if that kind of stuff is going on. You know, because the smaller stuff gets, we're technically entitled to it. And I would like to see the county, I know Darwin, you were hit with it several times, and the county is the one that's going to prosper from those outside of our town limits. And most of those are going to be because they're talking of agricultural usages and set up mini homes or whatever out on some of the ranches and let people stay in those when we're already booked for the rodeos. But those funds are not going to come to us. Those are going to be out of the town limits. And so we're not going to see those funds uh, of those peaks peak seasons, but we have shoulder seasons that we can concentrate on and fill them up when we don't have much budget going on. What, what I forgot to mention was um, when you talked about USDA loan or whatever, get like a cover or something, you know, we could probably use some of these funds for um, a grant match too would be my guess, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we're you know, going after any Oregon State Park and Rec, anything kind of that, yeah. Yeah, people are just waiting to hear. Exactly, yeah. And it's exactly for the same thing as mm -hmm. the cover and the heater exchanger and the bathrooms. So. And I do think the pool does get some, does count for tourism, just for the fact that you have, you're able to have district meets and stuff yeah. here now. It's, it's open to the public, yeah. which is, yeah, it's well, it's hey. well, and the, and the league stuff that you're doing that. If the pool was was only Lake like, County like, Lakeview residents only or something like that, I think you'd have problems. But yeah, it's exactly. Like, with the swim team stuff that you're doing so that that's, that's like, huge. Yeah. I mean, I mean as, as someone who uses the pool often every summer, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking those 60 days go by pretty quick. And well, halfway into late September, it's still nice hot I days. I would love it. to be using it, but you know the staffing that we use and this and that doesn't allow for it obviously right. currently. But it'd be nice to even if it was only open on the weekends yeah, during exactly you know certain. So, the problem, yeah, and you'd have to keep something with like high school students or something like that because you could get any full time employees or even half time and you start worrying about PERS issues. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the county runs in the same problem, and so that's what you've got to be really careful creating new town employees because it's not it's just with the way the benefits have to work and as expensive as PERS is, you're driving your bus. And that's where a partnership will have to come together if we're ever going to keep that thing open year round. I did mention the pool or the Charlie. Yeah, I said we need to really sit down and talk about forming a partnership between the school and the hospital and the town to figure out the way. I think many years ago there was a study done on the recreation. I think that was before you were even on the council. I mean, it was done before I was on the council, actually. But they did talk. It did talk about a year-round pool, and you know, of course, the. the oh drawbacks were employment and keeping it up and and then they suggested you know you sell memberships well that goes up and down it's not that reliable either so um, you're always going to lose money on the pool yeah it's just that's just an it's a so it was, it, it, it's a know, public it's year a round is, is a difficult mm -hmm. situation to solve actually mm -hmm. it seems as though we are going to have a large number of funds available after our lodger's tax goes through a full year, we'll know pretty much what that amount is. And then we know once Red Rock is operational, there's another very sizable amount of money that's to be used by the town council, of however they see fit. And, you know, there's a small amount taken out for this week, I think, but other than that, there's a pretty sizable fund that's going to be available. Yeah. And what are they saying about our 2020? Operational. For operational program. So, you know, that's when we start collecting those taxes. Our tax and blue. And that was community funding. Community service fee. Service fee. And it started out, the request started out very low, and through negotiations, it was bumped up because other entities had money from other projects that had come here and they prospered quite generously. And so I feel that the town was able to. To garner a good amount that can be utilized, and, and you know, at, at, at that same time, the county has those same funds available, mm -hmm. or close to. 
and that is the 60-40 split. But those are community service fees, and when you talk of, like I said, conference rooms or whatever, those are a multi-purpose facility that can be used by all in our area, whatever it might be, covering the pool, whatever, it, as long as it fits into those guidelines. Mm -hmm. Then we should go out and ask other entities to participate. There are funds available, and you know, if they want to serve the community, they should feel like they should step up and do so. And I know that's hard to, to say on their behalf. They're the ones that will have to make that decision. But those are funds that are available not too far over the horizon. So, anybody have anything else? Okay. Thank you. My part, my thinking is, uh, let's see who all is interested in and on this and table that till we get some people and bring it back and see who, who we feel would be best beneficial if we get a, a good number of people. And, and set the criteria before we name them and say, here, here's your job, when we don't know what to tell them, what they're tasked with, there's money, you know. Yeah. No, we need to set some criteria beforehand. Absolutely. And uh, do you so, all revert it to research with some of the other East Oregon towns, how they're using it, so that some project ideas and just some, get some good idea categories or how they constitute or what some of the guidelines are? Because that, I think, would be valuable for you guys. You're not making that more real. Mm -hmm. You can make whatever decision you want. It's just there's yeah, other, there's other, there's other, other communities that have been doing this for a while, so here in Oregon, you better. Okay. Yeah, this isn't going to happen overnight. No, it's, and it's a lot of money, so you can't expect it to just fall in place. Yeah. Set your guidelines and then... Okay. Let's table that till we get more information. Um, next on there is the age requirements for dispatch fire. This, I brought this up to Roberta about dropping the age from 21 because the people we've had put in a lot of them don't have any computer experience and stuff and you take your younger kids they're in the computers all the time and it's a necessity over there because you've got one you'll be talking on two different radios the telephone and writing at the same time and we've looked at different applications we did the interviews we have one that will work out really well. He's qualified and stuff. And we're just doing the background on him mm -hmm. right yeah. now. And he's less than 21? No. He, he's he's so 21. But, yeah. but right now, you got to be 21. And Have we had a lot of applicants who are under 21 no. No. so far? I mean, no. is, is haven't that? haven't had applicants, period. Very yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's well, not well. in the ad that you have to be over No. Down. No. What is states that you have to be 21 is our hand, our uh, employee job description. job description and so i have checked with dpsst and leds which you do not have to be 21. And in fact in leds you don't even have to there's some younger people that go in and do entry so you don't have to be uh, 18 even but i think 18 is a good age to have on people that are going to work with critical things and remember innovation. bigger areas that do stuff like that because i've seen some of those programs that's being done with like student interns and stuff that are already you know, early start college kids stuff like that that are going into like a law enforcement degree mm -hmm. they'll intern or do a externship or something in something along those lines so that's why they've allowed some of that as long as they pass the background check but i don't know that you have that population here that's places that have partnerships with, you know like southern oregon or lane community college stuff like that that's why you're seeing younger because they have volunteers and stuff that are trying to get themselves into like a criminal justice program or police academy etc we don't really have but that. the other thing that the state is i think pushing i think there was something on a referendum I, is more um job training in high school correct and well, so I'm, I'm, that, uh, but i know what you're saying but if someone really is interested in doing this you know in in high school they obviously wouldn't be able to sit there alone and do things but they could do some things just to see how the whole situation I mean, it's it's a stress can be a very stressful yeah, job. Yeah. And um, so, you know, that's a thought too. If well, I know we had it, didn't we have a cadet program within the fire department at one point when I because I remember one point. our chair's daughter yeah. 
was on it. Yeah, they, they were starting they were about 16, 16 years yeah. old. Yeah. And basically what they did, they rolled hoses um, and did outside stuff, but couldn't go in any fires at all until yeah. they turned 18. But by the time they turn 18, they can realize whether they, they want to be there. Yeah. yeah. And be a part of it. So I checked with legal counsel, with CIS on that one, and, and we would just have to change our job description. Are yeah, we talking about fire or dispatch or combination? This is just dispatch. Okay. Because fire already they allow. Yeah. They do a lot. So. Um, okay. So, I mean, for dispatch, we could get <laughs> little trainees, yeah. not little, but younger mm -hmm. trainees yeah. in there, too. And Katie said she didn't know that there was any problem as far as what she could see. So, and like I said, where lads and DPSST say that they can be 18 or less fitting, then they're, we don't have a problem with lower. Yeah. So, I mean, 17 or 18 year olds might be much better than some 50 year olds. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. would let you recruit right out of high school. With mm -hmm. stuff like that, if the kid wants to be one here in our community, mm -hmm. in, that want to stay here, because I know that's been a problem for you guys. <laughs> and they could have a really good career, is what I've told a couple of them that were interested. You know, if this ever did change, yeah. you know, they start out doing this, they can be retired in 20 years because it falls under the police. You know, that, you know, I guess it does. Yeah. It's 55 now. Yeah. yeah. So and those two agencies you mentioned, yeah, for the DPSST and, mm -hmm. and then the left 911, mm -hmm. those, if they're already using that in other organizations in our state, other communities, mm -hmm. then that's the criteria that, that we have to meet. So if yeah. it's fine with them, I think we should well, look like it Well, like I said, it, it was with DPSST and LEDs, and then Katie with um, CIS uh, said she didn't see a problem with us lowering that age at all. So. And I, don't I mean, they I have to go through the same training procedure as yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. I mean, and the only thing you might want to, the only thing you might want to deal with is if you're concerned about the younger ages. Sometimes, like watching testing for maturity. And we that's, do as far as mm -hmm. we test our dispatchers through the, I think it's the post uh, testing that is for a police officer. Yeah, that should get um, you there. But we do test them now already. Mm -hmm. So, so you would just want to make that. yeah you just want to make sure and if any enhanced stuff is necessary you might want to talk to some other community see if they've done anything the ones that are doing it if there's anything else which you know as far as other criteria they put in and just kind of keep that to make sure because again there's quite a range of 17 18 year olds but. oh yeah for sure so we kind of down the same line and not, not really but it, either one of your other items or dispatch fire. I talked today with the, the head of the broadcasters, uh, Society of Broadcast Engineers, who comes up with a state plan on emergency services. And he talked about the emergency services building here. He thought that it was a county-run operation, and I assured him that it is the town of Lakeview. And that what they want to do is they were going to send to the county uh, a new, well, hold it, let me back up, because they have to get approval first. Uh, as you all know, the failure of internet and the cellular networks during the Florida weather problems that they had, those conked out, and so the, the primary uh, extraterrestrial, that's radio and TV, were the ones that stepped up and were able to fulfill safety announcements. And so the state of Oregon has followed pursuit with Louisiana and Florida and has gained approval from Homeland Security for the usage of what they call the legacy analog system to get back to the basics of emergency broadcasts so that people know where to tune and you're not stuck with a smartphone that's not working or on the internet that's not working either because as he said, if the main thing here that they're worried about in Oregon is of course the big quake and once that happens there are, is going to be no internet so just in Oregon period it will be pretty much a bye so they're trying to get back to the basics with the legacy system and they're going to provide through the monies that they are requesting from the legislature <coughs> each of the emergency dispatch centers which would be the town of Lakeview uh, the uh, proper equipment for our dispatchers to have an ease of operation right now 
it's something new that sits there and it's a little gray box. The new one will be a little blue box that's the updated version of the EAS or Homeland Security and Office of Emergency Management. But they'll have the ease of just like tying into the CAP system that they're on now. They can type in the message and then it goes out. They don't have to voice that message or be scared of you know, what they're releasing out there. They type it in. If it fits the criteria, then it goes out. So those kind of things are being worked on, and I think that that will be helpful to the Lakeview Emergency Dispatch. And I assured him that it's a, a group entity that 911 intergovernmental is where the funds come from for our emergency services and dispatch. So he said he would be in contact with you with it and the town of Lakeview as they were closer to that, but they're, they're pretty sure that they're going to get that kind of funding. Okay. <clears throat> pretty much um, all of this will be on our agenda for the next meeting, so if we can vote on it. What figure out what we're going to do. Okay, anybody have anything else? Mm -hmm. I have nothing. Mm -mm. Okay. And I'll go ahead and adjourn the work session at 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs>